Hello, everybody. Welcome into Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today, we have a big, big show for you. We are going to cover everything that happened over the weekend in sports, that being the NBA Game 7s, the NHL Game 7s, anything else that might be going on around the world of sports, including some major moves in the MLB with the first major trade of the season happening. So that's that's everything we're going to cover today. There's a lot going on in sports. Uh, but before we get into all of that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a with a donate with a message in it that message will pop up on the bottom of the screen for you me and everybody else around the world to see uh we appreciate anything you do give we appreciate everything uh all of you guys for watching and everybody for sticking through this uh i do want to apologize there's a massive thunderstorm going on right now so if there is uh, a loud noise that is what it's going to be uh but like i was saying we have a lot, a lot to cover today, so let's just hop right into it. Uh, our first story, we're going to start out in the MLB. Luis Arias was traded to the San Diego Padres. The Padres, who already have a stacked lineup, you go up and down, they add former two-time former batting champion Luis Arias to a roster, and they give up two they give up a relief pitcher and three prospects. That's, excuse me, that's three of their top 15 prospects in the system. They give up uh, number six, number nine, and number 13 in their system to go out and get Luis Arias. Uh, and this is, this is an interesting move, in my opinion. We're talking about a guy in Luis Arias who, yes, well, last season he won the batting title and he hits for contact. He's an elite contact hitter. You add him to a team that already has a big clog in middle infielders. Luis Arias is a middle infielder, and he's not really an elite defender at that. They have Haseyong Kim. They have Manny Machado. They have Xander Bogarts. Uh, they have uh, Jake Cronenworth, Jack Jerickson Profar. Uh, all, all these guys uh, have the ability to play in the middle infield, and you're making it more crowded there. And while it's good to have depth, you're kind of struggling to fit all these guys into the lineup. You're forced into a situation like we've seen uh, over the weekend where Luis Arias is playing DH, and he's not a traditional DH in the sense that he is not going to hit for power. He's got, like, no pop in his bat, and as much as this move is going to benefit the Padres, because it is, you're getting an elite contact hitter, a guy that's going to get on base for these guys behind him. You know, he's been leading off, you know, he'll get on base, he's that typical leadoff hitter. You're getting guys on base for people like Fernando Tatis, for people like Jake Cronenworth, for people like Manny Machado that are hitting right behind him. But you also have to think about how the defense, the defense is going to work. And you're not going to have him in the field all that often. You're giving up three prospects from an already depleted prospect farm. And Luis Arias is... In the Padres, feel, this feels like more of a desperation move. This is really, really early in the season. Really early in the season for a trade of this caliber to happen. You know, we don't see trades like this happen unless it's around the deadline. We are a month into the year right now, and the Padres already feel the need to make this kind of move, which for those who have been following baseball for a little while, the Padres, uh, they had Juan Soto a couple se- They had Juan Soto for a couple seasons until they traded him away last season to the, uh, this offseason to the Yankees. You know, they had these guys. They, they had a roster that was on paper one of the best in the entire league. Excuse me. And now you're looking at a roster that, yes, while second in their division, they're not looking at competing with the Dodgers. You know, they they've had their share of issues in the in the in the dugout, and that's really what's held them back. It hasn't been the roster itself because they've been all in for a while now. You know, they made that huge move to go and get. Juan Soto. They paid huge contracts out to Manny Machado. They paid huge contracts out to uh, Xander Bogarts. They've gotten all these guys. Their payroll is huge and it's massive, and it's gotten them one playoff series. Grant, granted, 
it was a playoff series win against the Los Angeles Dodgers, which is huge for a team like the Padres that always feels like they're kind of being little brothered by the Dodgers. Um, but it also is an interesting move. Now, Luis Arias was on the trade block because the Marlins just fell apart this season. You know, they, they made a wild card last season, and this season they've they've fallen off a cliff. They've fallen apart. There's not too much that you, we can expect out of them at this point. Uh, so they, they, were gonna, they were always going to be sellers. Luis Arias has two years of control, including this one. He'll be a free agent after 2025. This is the second year in a row that he's been traded, if you remember, uh, two off-seasons ago. So not last off-season, but the off-season before this one. Luis Arias was traded from Minnesota to Miami uh, in a deal that included Pablo Lopez, and that one kind of worked out for both sides, right? Uh, Marlins had pitching to spare. They had lots of really, really good pitching. They didn't need... Uh, they didn't need Pablo Lopez. Now, he'd be a great guy to have, especially this season when all their pitchers are going down. But what they needed, what they need and what they still, what they need and what they still need was hitting. They always needed a batter. They always needed someone that could turn the lineup over. And he came in and he was huge for that. He was on base constantly. He was flirting with a 400, uh, 400 average for some time. Now, he is a guy that isn't going to get on base unless he gets a hit. You know, he had a 350 average, and he had a 390 on-base percentage. That's only 40 points higher than his uh, batting average, which for a guy that bats in the high 300s, you're gonna you you want your OPS to be at least over 400. And he is he did he wasn't doing that last season, uh, or his OBS, excuse me. Uh, he hits a bunch of singles, and he gets on base. And for a team like the Padres, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You need a guy on base because you need someone to— because they have plenty of guys that can chase home runs, but, you know, if no one's on base, you're not going to get that many runs. And it seems like it'll be a good fit. It does. You know, in the—excuse me. In the, in, the, in the couple games that they have uh, played with Arias, you know, they got him on Friday night, uh, so they— They've had him for two games now, had him over the weekend. They've been good, you know, he's he's been he's been solid. They went one on one they went one on one. They put up thirteen runs in the first game with him. he's not feeling with a fifty four base set right this season uh, and three eighty five slugging. So it's not again. He isn't gonna hit for power. He isn't gonna hit uh, he isn't going to get on base unless he gets, you know, his sing his singles. He doesn't walk that much. But at the top of the order, a guy that can get on base is very valuable. I don't love this move. I think they gave up a lot for him, and I it was always going to take a lot. I feel like the Marlins could have done better, too. I mean, I know they got three prospects, but the prospect farm in San Diego is depleted in that trade to the Nationals, uh, and they've, really, you know, done a lot to refill it. They've went out and they've made trades for... Uh, Josh Hader, a uh, couple seasons, he's he's now gone. Uh, they've they've made these big win now moves a lot of years in a row, and none of them have really worked out. I'm not a huge fan of this trade. Luis Arias is going to be a good fit for them. He's going to be a good piece, and he's going to help that team score more runs. But this team, its issue was never offense. Like its issue was never hitting. The issue really wasn't even the roster that it had. The issue was its teamwork, I guess. It's uh, its drive to win games. It's its ability to come back from a time when it was struggling and overcome it. It's a, it, There wasn't anyone in that, in that locker room, in that dugout, that was able to get the team together, get them on the same page, and get them through the grueling season that is baseball. People forget, people, people underestimate how big a deal uh, togetherness is and uh, how how big of a mental aspect it is to have, like your teammates in baseball. You can use an example, like the Padres on paper, last season, at the beginning of the season, they had Machado, they had uh, Bogarts, they had Juan Soto, they had Tatis, you know. That is an insane lineup right there. And yet they were on the same tier as the Washington Nationals, who had no one and they still have no one and the main difference between these two teams is the fact that in Washington their culture
is good. They're able to pick themselves up. They're able to stay positive even in a losing season, even a season when they're bad and they know they're bad. The Padres have not had the ability to do that, and it's it doesn't matter. They, they could build a team full of all-stars. They could have the greatest players in the entire world. But if your dugout is not staying together, if you are fighting amongst each other and you hate you hate the people you're with, you're not. It's not going to build a winning culture. You're not going to win games. You can win a couple games, but you're not going to make a run. Baseball is a long season. 162 games plus playoffs. You're looking at if if you are looking to make a World Series run, you're playing from September to to uh. You're playing from September. Uh, you're playing from excuse me from March all the way to September, October. You know, that's almost the enti- that's almost a year that you are with this group of people, these 26 guys. And if you can't get along with them, it's going to ruin your season. You're not going to be your best self because you're not happy. You know, you're not getting along, and that's really been the Padres' issue. They can load up on talent. They can win them a couple games. A, a rise is a great fit. But if they can't fix their culture, it's not going to matter. It really isn't. They could have had Shohei Otani on that team, and it wouldn't have mattered. They could go get Mike Trout. They could go bring back Barry Bonds, Prime Barry Bonds, whatever. It won't matter. If that team isn't together, if that team doesn't like each other, they're not getting anything done. And I haven't seen that change in them. And until then, this trade doesn't move me. Luis Arias isn't a piece that's going to win you a championship. He is a huge, he's a great batter, don't get me wrong. He'll get you, he'll, he'll get you a bunch of hits. But aside from that, he doesn't do much. And I think they gave up a little too much for him. Uh, Let me know what you guys think of this trade. In our next segment coming up, we're going to transition into playoff basketball. We're going to talk about Game 7 between the Cavs and the Magic. The Cavs move on. And we're going to talk a little bit about the insane performance of Anthony Edwards. uh, And if the Timberwolves can keep that up as they steal Game 1 versus the Nuggets. So stick around for that. We'll be right back on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network.